Here we have two separate emails. Let's take a look at the differences between the two. Here in this email, this was sent from Kelly, and it appears that it was sent to Kelly at the same time, and yet I received it. It's an announcement of some kind. So is this. This is an announcement of another kind. However, it was sent directly to me, and it was from this individual up here. So in this case, it appears as though it was sent directly to me. This one, on the other hand, makes it clear that I'm just part of a mailing list of some kind. Let's take a look as to how we can create an email, send it directly to the individual email address, and maybe add some personal fields in here, such as instead of ICT colleagues, we might say, hi, first name, or hi, Eric and then the announcement within the email. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna open up Microsoft Word here and as you can see, it's just blank. I'm gonna use the content that Kelly had sent us. I copied it already. And now we have it pasted within the document, the general announcement. Now, if I want to send this a message, this announcement to a large group or otherwise a group of emails, I can do so in which it will be sent directly to the individual's email address while identifying that individual in the email, making it appear that it was sent to them. So it's a little bit of thoughtfulness behind it. Let's take a look how we do this. We're going to come up to our mailings ribbon tab. Over here in the start mail merge group, we're going to click start mail merge. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and start the mail merge using this wizard here. It seems to be the easiest way. From here, we're going to come over to the mail merge task pane. We're going to choose email message and then choose next down here. I'll click on it. Now it's going to convert it and it's going to look as though it will appear within an email. Now within the mail merge task pane, we're going to make sure that use the current document selected and then click next. Now before we import a list, let's open the list that we're going to work with. It's usually found in Excel. Here we have our list that's opened up. We, it's always a good idea to preview the list that you're about to import. So in this case, we have the email column and a display name column. What I want to do is I want to separate the names into first and last. And I can do that by simply selecting the entire list and then separating it out into first and last. This is how I do it. So I select the first cell in the range of cells I want selected. I'm going to press shift control arrow key down. I've now selected the entire column. Now from here I'm going to come to my my data tab and over here in the data tools group I'm going to click text to column. That'll open up our little uh, dialog box here, delimited is going to be selected and click next. Now it'll ask in what way is it s separated. Space is one way in which it's separated. I'm going to just click finish. So now it separ separates the data out. I'll simply rename these. This, for, this one will be renamed as F name and then L name. As you might imagine, this is L for last name, F for first name. Pretty simple. Now from here, I'm going to auto fit some of the columns. It won't make much of a difference because this happens to be a CSV file format. And as we all know, CSV happens to stand for comma separated values. So otherwise delimited, that's all it is. So I'm just going to click save to save the changes. And when I do click save, I get this possible data loss. It's just talking about the features, the columns, width and, and stuff like that. We're not going to lose any data. It's just the separating of the first and last name, the column width, those are all part of an Excel features, whereas comma separated value will just have the raw data. We're going to click this to close it and it's, it's just fine. So now that we're finished with this, we're going to close the Excel program down. And now from here, we're going to choose browse in our mail merge task pane and go and find that mailing list. Here it is now, I'm gonna select it and click open. And when I do, I get this little dialog box here, mail merge recipients. It's gonna ident identify that indeed, it has a L name, F name field, and email field. 
simply put. At this point, if I really wanted to, I can scroll through this and maybe find folks, oh, I don't want Teresa to receive this. I'll just remove the check mark there from that box and that individual or that record will not be part of the mailing list. I can do that with several of them if I want to. Otherwise, I'm gonna choose all of them and click OK. So now this, that list is merged to this document. Now from here, at the very top, you can see our insertion point blinking right here. I'm gonna type in there, hi, and then I wanna place a what's called a field placeholder in the location of the insertion point. So I wanna identify the first name right there. So I'm gonna come up to the insert merge fields, click that drop down, and it's gonna show me the list of fields available. So I wanna put F name right there, and then do a comma, press enter. So it's gonna say, hi, first name, now, in order for me to get a good idea of how that's gonna look, because right now it's just a field placeholder, up here in the preview results group, I'm gonna click preview results. And there it is, it says, hi, Teresa. Now I can scroll through this and look at all the different records and just verify that indeed it's showing the first name. Pretty simple, not much to it. Now from here, I'm gonna click next in the mail merge task pane. And I'm going to leave this alone because I've already identified what I want here. Click Next again. Now here's where I can preview or maybe exclude certain people. I can go back and modify that list. I'm going to click Next again. And now it's going to give me this option at the very end, six of six. Right? This is the sixth step of the sixth step. So I'm going to click Email. And now from here it's going to say, what do I want to email to? I want to email to the email list. And the subject line is going to be your invited. And then what format? I'll leave it as HTML. And now here's where I can choose how many records I want to send. I can send to the entire list. Or I can send to the current record if I happen to come across one that I like. Or I can choose a range. If I have a database of 10,000 or 20,000 individuals, well, it might be a good idea for me to get this in a manageable blocks of emails. So I might say record one to 500, one to 1,000, and then next week or the next day, I can choose 1,001 to 2,000 and do blocks like this. Otherwise, I'll just choose all. And when I click OK, I'm not gonna do it right now. If I did click OK right now, Microsoft Word would automatically merge up with Microsoft Outlook and start compiling all these e these messages addressed to the individuals that are in the mail list itself. Pretty simple. And once this is clicked, I could go over to Outlook and look at my Outbox and just watch them start stacking up, stacking up, stacking up. Pretty simple. Anyway, I'm gonna click cancel. This was a short exercise in demonstrating how to email an entire list of people while addressing them directly. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have people that you know in your life that can benefit from this, by all means, please share this information. It will definitely help them out.